ABC 15 News at 11 starts now. Now at 11, cleanup efforts are underway after a strong storm with high winds took down trees and power lines. Plus, President Obama says when he leaves office, he will leave several thousand American troops in Afghanistan more than he planned. And the partner of the homeless man detained in the death of UW student Bo Solomon in Italy says his death was a terrible accident. Our big story, hundreds of people in our area are cleaning up the mess left behind by powerful thunderstorms overnight. And we want to thank you. Many of you have been posting pictures of damage on our Facebook page. Let's take a look at a few of them now. We begin, this is on 2nd Street in Evansville. Last night, that car did not look like a convertible. Look at that. Thank you to viewers Joel and Cheryl for sending it to us. What a headache that's going to be. Yeah, here's a look along the Southwest Bike Path on Allied Drive in Madison. This comes from Tom. Lastly, Megan snapped this picture from a tree falling on a house near Mount Vernon. Time now to check in with Chief Meteorologist Charlie Shortino. And Charlie, you say perhaps more severe weather on the way tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow it looks like uh, we'll have that opportunity again. There's a slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm this afternoon. I wouldn't worry about those too much. Uh, they don't have the potential of uh, getting to severe levels. Uh, it is going to be a rather warm and humid afternoon. Could get a peak or two of sunshine along the way today. We're at 75 right now. We're going to throw another dozen degrees on the pile this afternoon. So we'll be there in the mid to upper 80s for highs. Dew point's been climbing slowly but steadily. It's up to 68. That will peak in the low to mid 70s. Low pressure moving by to the north of here will bring another round of thunderstorms from the looks of things tomorrow. And some of those could reach severe levels. Here's the severe weather outlook for today. Just a marginal risk of severe weather over the south central and uh, southwestern portion of Wisconsin. Tomorrow, though, an enhanced risk of severe weather, including Madison, Janesville, Beloit, toward Dubuque, Prairie du Chien, uh, Richland Center, all included in that moderate risk of severe weather. And that would come into play from the looks of things tomorrow afternoon or evening. We'll talk about that. We will also look ahead to what looks to be a pretty nice weekend forecast. Do that all in about 10 minutes. Charlie, thank you. And the storms did knock out power for thousands of people in our viewing area. NBC 15's Christy Batista joins us now live from West Madison with the latest. Christy. That's right. I just got off the phone with MGE and e spokesperson Steve Schultz, and he says power should be restored to all of their customers by the end of the day tomorrow. He also said that this is the largest power outage they have seen in 10 years. There are still crews out working to restore that power to those affected areas like the homes you see behind me here near Whitney Way and Piping Rock Road. Schultz says there were a total of 18,000 customers that were without power today and as of about 10 o'clock this morning they have rest restored all but 3,000. He says there were about 170 incidents this morning, each affecting five to 10 customers. That causes a lot more work for their crews. For MGE, he says it is an all hands on deck situation. By two o'clock in the morning, we had a lot of our crews in here, and then they've been working nonstop since then. Um, you know, and they will work. We do rotate crews, um, but uh, we, we will have crews working as long as it takes, um, you know, to get everybody restored. Now, Schultz also wants to remind everyone to stay safe. Never go near a down power line. If you see one, always assume that it is energized and call them right away so that they can be the ones to take care of it. Once again, spokesperson Steve Schultz for MGNE tells us all power should be restored to all of their customers by the end of the day tomorrow. We're live on Madison's West Side, Christy Batista, NBC 15 News. Christy, thank you. And at last check, Alliant Energy is reporting more than 1,000 outages. The counties with the most are Dane County and Richland County. Madison's West Side took a hit from the strong winds and storms overnight. Here's a look at a tree that fell onto a shelter at Norman Clayton Park. And at the West Madison Little League field, a large tree came straight out of left field and crushed two fences and smothered the outfield bleachers. The damage left crews with quite a bit of cleanup to do. This is my third year here as the head groundskeeper and I have not seen anything like this before. We had, we've had a couple 
trees come down and branches come down, but nothing to this extent. Vitens Golfland is also picking up a fallen tree of their own off of Schrader Road, but a few branches and leaves didn't stop people from hitting the links this morning. New at 11, the partner of the suspect in the murder of the UW student killed in Italy claims Bo Solomon's death was a tragic accident. The body of the 19-year-old was pulled from the Tiber River earlier this week. This morning, we learned the initial autopsy showed there was water in Solomon's lungs, meaning he would have been alive when he went in the water. Now, a woman who lived in an improvised camp with a man who's detained by police said Bo was drunk and fell into the water after a shoving match with him. President Obama is putting the brakes on the planned U.S. troop withdrawal from Afghanistan. This morning, he announced 8,400 troops will stay there when he leaves office next year. The president had planned to drop troop levels further by the end of this year, but says Taliban resurgence has forced Washington to rethink its exit strategy. Congressman Mark Pocan is using the story of a Madison woman killed by gun violence to make a point today. Caroline Nosel was shot and killed in February as she left her job at Metro Market. Christopher O'Crowley has been arrested for the crime. Since the tragedy, Nosel's family has worked with local lawmakers for stricter gun laws. Pocan addressed the floor for about five minutes this morning on her case and gun control. We will bring you his message tonight on NBC 15 News at 5. Around the nation, a California man is facing kidnapping charges after being caught on a surveillance camera attempting to kidnap a six-year-old girl. Video captured the moment a woman walks into a cell phone store with her six-year-old just steps away. When suddenly, a man reaches into the store and snatches the little girl. But the man didn't get far. Witnesses say the little girl fell, causing the would-be kidnapper to lose his grip. Investigators say the suspect may have been under the influence of drugs. More than 500,000 hoverboards have been recalled nationwide due to a risk of overheating and exploding. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission says at least 99 incidents of overheated battery packs have been reported. Now, if you have one, you can contact the company to return your hoverboard for a full refund. Coming up on NBC 15 News at 11, we have some sweet treats to help you cool off this summer. That's right. Chef Chantel with the Willie Street Co-op shares three unique popsicle recipes right after this.